Hi everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Little Cricket's Big Podcast. I'm Cricket, I go by Cricket online, but you can call me Tessa in real life, uh, or online if Cricket's weird. Um, I'm coming to you live-ish, in the past, in the future, from Western North Carolina. And uh, yeah, I've wanted to podcast for about a year now. I'm in a really good mood after the election, so I thought, why not? Uh, I hope, I, I, I hope that the audio is good because I can't find my microphone. Every time I tried to find my microphone today, I, I couldn't find it. I ended up finding, uh, two rubber chickens instead. So I considered that a good omen and, and just kind of went for it. So I hope that, uh, this first episode goes really well. I'm kind of... And not putting a lot of pressure on myself today. Uh, it's more about getting the first episode out and and getting comfortable on camera than than having my really nice microphone that's MIA. Uh, I'm really shy in real life. Uh, none of my friends will agree with me, but I'm really shy in real life. So I'm trying my best here on camera. Uh, I do have show notes because I'm professional. <laughs> And I wrote those show notes with my I voted in the 2020 election pin. And I hope that everyone voted in the 2020 election. So uh, let's just get started with some of my most recent finished objects. They're mostly Halloween themed because it is November the 8th. It's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, dad, even though you don't have internet. Uh, these are Halloween themed um, because that's what I was working on through all of October. And I'm talking really fast. So these are my play socks by Stone Knits on Ravelry. I made these with Hedgehog Fiber Sock. The orange is Rusty Nail, and I hope that it focuses enough. And the uh, black and white kind of gray speckle there is called Magpie. And it's kind of, that's pretty true. Um, I did alter the heel to make it a heel flap and gusset. I think she has you do a short row heel. I wasn't really into learning something new uh, with these socks because I wanted them done quickly so I could wear them on Halloween. Uh, I didn't go anywhere on Halloween. We just, we got a new really nice couch from Ikea that pulls out into a bed. So we just watched uh, scary movies all night. But um, yeah, I wanted these done by Halloween. So um, I hope everyone had a really good Halloween. I did, like I said, we watched uh, scary movies. We have a tradition, my husband and I, where we, um, we usually have trick-or-treaters, but we'll watch Garfield's Halloween before before it gets dark, when all the trick-or-treaters are still out, in case they look in and see something, um, they shouldn't. And then we watch Blair Witch Project, which is my, which is my favorite, uh, horror movie. I really like horror movies. I really like scary shows, scary books. I'm hoping that maybe every podcast I can, um, recommend a horror movie to watch. I know that not everyone likes my taste in horror movies because I like a lot of found footage movies. Um, and I've seen a lot of really bad ones, so the really good ones stick out. So, I don't know. Maybe you'll find something nice to watch. Um, this is... Oh, another thing I wanted to say about the play socks is that they're usually a scrappy project. So, ideally, every uh, little triangle and these are supposed to look like play buttons which is why I wanted to watch scary movies in them uh, like I said I really like movies but uh, every row of triangles here is supposed to be a different color but I um, orange and black and white seemed perfect for Halloween so I just went with it um, this is my litmus cow uh, by Amy Florence she does the stranded knits podcast and yarn company um and she just celebrated her fifth anniversary of her yarn company so she won't watch this but happy anniversary <laughs> so yeah these are just row one minis i'll talk a little bit about what i do with my row one minis in a second this was just kind of a scrappy 
project to get to get rid of the other half of some of my things but this is just um a cow you cat it's a free pattern so i'll talk about it but you cast on like a hundred stitches in fingering weight and then knit for about 30 inches i actually knitted for 42 because i like i don't want my cow to be super tight and i don't think my gauge is is, is exactly on par with amy's but I think this was done with a size 2 needle. Um, I kind of like to have like a long-term scrappier project just to just to have something to work on when I'm when I'm kind of stressed out. And I think this is really pretty. I casted it on in June. Casted it. -ed. <laughs> I cast it on in June and I just and I just finished. Um and and it just got done blocking, so it's nice and soft. I have another one of these. Um, that I'm not going to show because it's it's not a newly finished object. It'd be something in the what I'm wearing category. But that one's out of uh, Copper Corgi. And it's got like, not alpaca and not yak, but it's got something else in it that's a little scratchy. So I'm excited to have a merino one that I can wear to, to work. Um, and a little more about me. I actually work in a bookstore. I'm not going to be more specific than that. But um, I work in a bookstore, so I have people coming in. And I like to wear my knits to work because it's the only place I'm going right now because of COVID and, and fish for compliments. So I'm, I'm hoping this will catch someone's, catch someone's eye. And then this was my big knit for October, and this is the Candy Skull Sweater. I don't know if it's Candy Skull Pullover or Sweater, but we're going to go with Sweater. And it's just a really nice yoked sweater. It's got skulls and crossbones. It's supposed to have color work on the sleeves, but I wasn't... Like I said, I really wanted to have this done so I could wear it on Halloween and so I could wear it to work before Halloween to get my compliments and uh, so I didn't do the color work on the sleeve and this is by who is this by Chelsea Lee Kennan on Ravelry so this is knit with Malabrigo Rios and this is the glitter colorway and the natural colorway I really liked this natural color it's just a white but it was a lot Malabrigo Rios is soft anyway, but this was a lot, um, a lot softer. Uh, Malabrigo Rios is actually my favorite yarn. Uh, so it's just always really nice to make a Malabrigo sweater. And it's just so, like, it's so warm. It wears so well. It's so squishy. Yeah, I really had a really, a really good time making this. This is the 42 inch. It, it calls for, I think, five to eight inches of positive ease. And I'm a 36 bust. I had originally cast on, I think, for a 44 inch. And then I scrapped it and went down to 42. Um, and I don't I don't know if I'm going to be able to insert pictures. I've never edited like this before. Um, so I'll try to insert my picture here. <laughs> if, if I can, of me wearing it. I think it fits me really well. Um, I feel really pretty in it really confident it's I made the sleeves as long as they needed to be it hits just right below my waist uh, Malabrigo kind of um, it doesn't stretch out but it it, it blocks out really nicely um, so it's kind of almost like a learning curve I'd say with it of how much you know you don't knit if you want your sleeves here, you don't knit your sleeves to here. You knit them, say, to here so they can block out that far. Um, but let's talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Harvest Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. It's in Malabrigo Rios. Like I said, it's my favorite yarn. Um, and this is in the Frank Ochre colorway. Uh, mustard is my favorite color. Um, this... Vera Bear that I made. Um, she's not really a finished object. She's been she's been here for a while, but she's in the same she's in the same color. I just kind of wanted a teddy bear, in the same color as 
is my favorite yarn. But she's going to hang out back there. If she stays up. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about my harvest. I wear it a lot. I actually did a garter ribbing at the bottom. Just for a cohesiveness with the garter button band. I did that there too. Um, what I liked about this pattern is the button band was knit like all together. So it it's kind of feels more instant gratification-y than, than having to knit a whole cardigan and then pick up stitches to, to get your button band back on. Um, but yeah, this was my last... This was my last knit before COVID, so it's kind of like, I wore it for Valentine's Day and we saw Sonic the Hedgehog in theaters, and it feels like that was years ago, and that was only this Valentine's Day. We also saw, we did a double feature and watched the Fantasy Island movie by Bloomhouse. I thought it was good, but it wasn't until the very end that I realized that it was based on Fantasy Island, the, the old TV show. Um, and I never watched Fantasy Island because I'm I'm only 27 and that was in the 70s. And uh, I was talking to my husband and I'm not really sure who they made that movie for. Because uh, my dad's in the Fantasy Island like age range. He's, he turned 58 today. And I told him about it and he said that sounds really stupid. So I'm not sure who they made that for. Um, and then I, I kind of... Whenever I watch podcasts, I always wonder about their jewelry, too. So I was going to talk about the jewelry that I'm wearing. Um, so my wedding ring is from Walmart. <laughs> That's not the big important stuff. Um, I have a whole story about why my wedding ring is from Walmart. No shame. I had a lot of problems. Excuse me. I had a lot of problems trying to get a wedding ring in time for my wedding back in September. Um, and then this is just the Eliza, Eliza, I'm not sure how she says it, Kendra Scott necklace. It's in the slate gray, and my husband got it for me for my birthday. Um, and then my earrings, which are little leaves, and then my ring here are, uh, Stuart Knight, and he's actually a North Carolinian, um, jewelry maker. He makes a lot of things, like this is a dogwood, and I don't know what kind of leaves they are, but he makes, um, like sterling silver pieces that are like, um, North Carolina themed. Um, I hope that he still makes jewelry, because these are actually, um, vintage. My, my Nana gave these to me, um, out of her collection, so I hope if this sings to you, you can, you can find it. I'm pretty sure you can go on eBay. If not, um, let's see, works in progress. I've got a few, um, these are just kind of my more, my more active ones. Uh, since this is my first podcast, we don't have anything to look back on, I guess. So I wanted a good, a good range of things because I have, I've been a little cast on crazy, but this is. The Adirondack Pullover by Elizabeth Morrison. And, oh good, this is reading really well. Uh, the color-wise. Um, so, like I said, my husband and I got married in September. We've actually been together for 10 years. Uh, he is 29 and I'm 27. So we met when I was 17 and he was 19. Um, and we just... Everyone's been asking us when we're going to get married, when we're going to get married, because we've been together um, for a whole decade, which is amazing. And I always said that we wouldn't get married until I had time to plan the wedding. Uh, so I got furloughed in March from, from the bookstore, and suddenly I had time to plan the wedding. So that's, that's how I spent my furlough time, was planning our wedding. Uh... I haven't been knitting, and I'll talk about my knitting story maybe in a, in a later episode, but I haven't been knitting for those whole 10 years. I've been knitting for about three, two or three. I'm really bad with like remembering dates. 
uh, year dates unless something like like I got my gallbladder removed in 2015 and and that's the only reason I remember that is because it was uh, an organ got removed but I don't remember uh, when I started like seriously knitting but uh, I heard about the boyfriend's sweater curse and I told him that I wasn't going to knit him a sweater until we were married uh, and then last March he proposed to me and was already asking for a sweater I think within a few weeks of when when he proposed and I said not until we're married and then a few weeks after we got married he said uh, I'm not your boyfriend anymore so you can make me a sweater so this is his Christmas gift and this is the Adirondack pullover it's a nice um, seed stitch rib so it doesn't like cinch in like real ribbing would um, I hope that it fits him well he's pretty skinny and I've never knit him a garment before, so I it's kind of just to wear in the house and like be cozy. And I'm knitting it, it's supposed to be knit on a size 7, but I just, I know more than anybody. And I didn't double check and make sure what I needed to cast on in, so I cast on with an 8. So it's going to be a little roomy and... Um, of see through it maybe a little I I hope he likes it um if he doesn't I'll wear it I actually got yarn to make myself a matching one okay I'm recording on my phone and my Yahtzee app just told me stuff I don't care about <laughs> but this is Barocco vintage it's in the indigo um indigo color it's a really pretty dark navy blue our wedding colors were navy blue and, and mustard so um that kind of just represents who we are fundamentally fundamentally as people we actually have um real adirondack chairs uh on our porch that we got for our birthdays that are yellow and, and blue um but for some reason i didn't i said that i got yarn to get them to make matching a matching sweater for myself. I got green. I didn't get yellow. I don't know. Um, and then I have this cute little stitch marker. He really likes um, McDonald's fries. <laughs> and uh, I made him cheeseburger socks from Abby's Art Yarn. I can't remember. But it came with these little fries. So I thought just one big husband extravaganza. <laughs> Uh, he actually works from home um, right now because of COVID, and he has since f since March. Um, and the reason why I'm recording today is because uh, every four or five weeks, I can't remember, he actually has to go to his office, and he's out of the house today. And I'd be totally mortified. I don't know. I'm really shy about stuff like this. I'd be totally mortified if I had to record while he was in there. Um, he's an IT analyst, so he'd actually have to be on the phone. So I don't even know if my phone would pick him up, but I wouldn't want to disturb his calls anyway. But um, I'm just I'm just looking at my show notes. All right, so my next thing is God. This <laughs> we call this bag Mr. Stain. It probably looks like nice and uniformly colored but this bag actually used to be mustard um, my husband got it for me when I first started knitting and it, it's not a fringe fiber company bag it's I, I can't remember I don't think they make bags anymore but it did have a leather handle on it and for some reason I just tossed this in the washing machine and the color from the leather got all over the bag and it looked just stained so I dyed it brown and it's not the most uniform dye job because of all the stains on it, but we call him Mr. Stain. This is probably like my favorite bag though. It's got all of my it's got all of my pins on there. Um, we like to go to Gatlinburg in Tennessee a lot because we only live two hours away. Sadly, we weren't able to go this year because of because of COVID, but uh, we went to a really cool haunted house there called the Mystery Mansion. And the last time we were there, last October, we found the Bush's Baked Beans Factory. 
and both of us hate baked beans, but I was really excited because we just went around the corner and it was just there. And I was like, oh my God, a gift shop, we have to stop. And uh, <laughs> my husband loves me a lot. So he, uh, he stopped and dealt with me talking to literally everybody in there. And I spent $40. <laughs> I spent $40 in there, but one of the things that I got was this Bush's Baked Beans pin. But, uh, oh, and then I have a button maker, so I made this little button. It's just a deer. I don't know if you can even. But it says Creep. That's my, one of my favorite songs from Radiohead is, is Creep. I guess because I'm a creep. <laughs> but, uh. This is my second Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Um, I already knit one Weekender. I knit that one in Lion's Brand Fisherman's Wool, um, which is like a really um, economic yarn, like a budget yarn. Uh, I knit the whole thing for like $38. It only needed two big, two big balls of the Fisherman's Rib, and it's like a nice marled cream and brown marled sweater excuse me I might wear it next time because I'm talking about things you can't see but this is um it is it's a more rustic yarn the fisherman's wool so it's a little it's a little scratchy um and I usually don't mind but I I have a chronic illness and so sometimes I feel more um more precious than other times so I decided to to get a sweater's quantity of Malabrigo Rios and 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 make myself one. This is the Nimbus gray colorway. I've got a little skull progress uh, stitch marker there. Um, and this is what it looks like on the inside because it's it's knit with the wrong side fa facing outwards. I can't find the pearl stitch. Hold on. I mean the slip stitch. But yeah, it's really pretty. I'm really happy with it. I'm kind of, I knit my my first one in about a month, I think. And I'm kind of just taking my time with this one. Because um, I do really want to have my husband's sweater done by Christmas. Um, and I, I have a lot of sweaters and, and he doesn't have any sweaters. He doesn't have any clothes. He's just, he's topless at work. Um, but yeah, so, I can't remember what size that I'm making. I want to say I'm making the 42 inch in that one as well. I kind of tend, so I'm not as skinny as I used to be. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm not fat, I'm pretty thin. It wouldn't matter if I was, but I, I used to weigh like 100 pounds, and now I only weigh, and now I weigh like 130 and that's just because I'm almost 30 years old. I'm not 17 anymore. Um, but it's taking a long time to kind of get used to those body changes as you get older. Because I've, I've never been 27 years old before. I've only been 27 since July. And, you know, your body changes as you get older. And I guess I'm not always the most confident with that. And I tend to, like when I cast on, you know, I'll look at the ease whatever that may be, and I'll be like, oh, I'm, even if it's my size, I'm like, oh, that's not going to fit, and I go up a size, and I don't know why I'd, I'd do that. I, I think that's a problem that a lot of different people have, but, uh, yeah, I had originally cast on for a size that was, like, way too big, and I was like, this is taking forever, so I, I frogged that, and I, I think I'm making the 44. 42 inch size who knows I'm sure it's on Ravelry if you care to look um, I don't I can't remember if I already gave my social medias but um, I'm gonna see if I can put it down at the bottom of the screen but uh, on Instagram and I'll see if I can flip this too because I know it's backwards on Instagram I'm little cricket underscore and on Ravelry I'm not like 
not K, not with a K, um, not Little Cricket on Insta on Ravelry, uh, cause I thought I was clever. Um, and now for my last work in progress, and this is uh, literally my biggest project. Um, and it's the one that's gonna take me the longest, but this is my cozy memories blanket. And I've seen a lot of people say that they'll like never get their cozy memories blanket finished. I've seen some people um, just like have to rip theirs out because they know they're never gonna finish it. But uh, I I cast this on back in February, and I've done really well with it. I've it's. I don't even know how well you can see because I'm going to be behind it for a second. And, and I'm just going to hold it up because it's probably going to muffle my voice when I'm behind it. But, um, yeah, I really, I really love this project. I cast it on at the very end of February, right when COVID started getting serious in the U.S., and I wanted, I was really nervous about it because I, like I said, I've watched a lot of horror movies. I've watched The Walking Dead. I was really, I was really scared. I mean, I'm scared, I'm still cautious and scared now. I wear my mask at work and everywhere and stuff like that. But like, you know, it was winter and it's like, I don't know how to hunt and trap. I, you know, like what am I, what am I supposed to do? Um, and then, you know, I got furloughed and everything, so I wanted something that could just be really comforting. Um, and just, like, low stress when I knit it, don't have to think about it. Like, I don't, I don't really plan my squares, I just kind of grab randomly. Um, and this is what I do with my row one minis. So my husband gets me the row one yarn subscription because he's very nice to me most of the time he's really mean he's really mean like he doesn't give me everything I want and he doesn't let us have Chinese food every night <laughs> but uh he does the nicest thing he does is he gets me my row one subscription every month so I I add in you know a square this is I think that it's going to end up being 16 rows and then I'm gonna 16 yeah rows yes no 16 that feels so stupid 12 by 16 6 12 across 16 up yes 16 rows 12 columns okay uh, and then I'm going to block it after that 16 and see where we are in terms of size because I do want it to be something that I can cuddle up under under the couch completely because I do like to take couch naps. And then my plan is to, so I've basically quilted it. So I've got my quilt top and then a layer of flannel, a layer of batting, and then the backing, which is probably going to be, um, I don't know if it's going to be flannel or quilting cotton. I want it to be really warm. Um, and then basically hand tie at every intersection here. Um, and then, I don't, I'm, I'm only knitting 16 months worth of squares. I, I have 12 across and then I get a row done a month. Um, I'm actually about a month and a half ahead. I'm halfway through my November, my November row now because I stress knit. I only worked on this blanket during September because it was leading up to our wedding, and then um, worked on it worked on it a lot in October. So I'm a little bit ahead, but I'm only doing 16 months worth of squares because I'm I'm tired, <laughs> and then I'll probably like put a garter stitch border around it and then I think I'm gonna do a crab stitch crochet edging so yeah this is my blanket I I did fall colors let's see yeah 
I did fall colors for the month of October, the actual month of October, which is this one down here. Um, and then I, I do put my minis in there, but like these are the two colors from my play socks. I made a sock head. I made a sock head hat and I put that in there. Um, this is from my wedding shawl, which I might show later. Um, on Halloween night, I did these two. Uh, I cast on another pair of Halloween socks. I really like Halloween socks. Even before I knit, I would get like Halloween socks from the dollar store and just like wear them whenever I wanted to. So this is from Whip Yarns and it's their BFL base. Um, but I didn't get those finished in time for this Halloween season. But uh, I was at the point for a contrast teal. So I went ahead and I cut and I put this square in. And then this is some fiber seed. Uh, which, which, and I got it for, I got it last year when we were in Gatlinburg. Uh, my vacation LYS is the Smoky Mountain Spinnery. Uh, my real LYS is Black Mountain Yarn Shop, which I love with all my heart. But, uh, when I go on vacation, I always go to Smoky Mountain Spinnery. And I got it there last year, and I was, I was making a Halloween sweater last year with this, and it just didn't really sing to me, so I actually frogged it, and then I put, I kind of, I striped the bottom of it here with some black, and then, but yeah. So that's what I've been, that's what I've been working on. Um, my blanket is something that I'll probably share, um, maybe not every episode, but every few episodes, because I do, I do put a lot of work into it. It's something that I actively work on. I like it, because it's at the point it's kind of hard to show how, how big it is because I'm sitting down. But uh, it's at the point where I can like lay under it where I work when I work on it. And it's it's just really nice. I'm in not that big of a hurry to finish it. I'm really patient. Uh, like I said, it took me 10 years to get married. But uh, I'm really patient. So it's just kind of nice to have like a, a blankie to work on. Uh during these hard hard times uh, I hope that everyone has a project that's really really comforting to them I I don't talk about it a whole lot on social media but my, my friends know I'm I, I'm pretty depressed and I have anxiety sometimes and uh, it's just really nice to have something grounding and, and nice to work on and you know, we're in a celebration mode after the election, but there's still a lot of work to do. Um, and, and just so there's no delusions on where I stand, Black Lives Matter, um, don't tell women what to do with their bodies. Uh, gay people deserve to get married. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of tensions in the country, and I, I just hope that everyone has something that they can feel good about when they work on and, and makes them feel good. Um, but yeah, I, this has gone on long enough. I'm kind of rambling. 33 minutes is about my attention span. I could, I could talk for hours, but, um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here. I, I, I really hope that I, I'm not gonna say that I hope I get followers and comments and everything but I really hope that I don't know I made somebody laugh today and um like I said I've wanted to do this for a while and it feels really good to just sit down and do it because I, I don't have a lot of knitting friends I started a knitting group before COVID and uh after our first meeting COVID hit and you know we haven't been able to get together and stuff and I'm too shy to get on zoom with them you know uh, but yeah, if you watched this far, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll try to put links to everything down in the, down in the description box. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you again soon. I don't know where my little remote went, so I'm just gonna turn it off this way. Bye!
and uh, I promised a movie recommendation and I totally forgot about it and just ended the episode, but uh, your recommendation for this week is Hell House LLC, which um, used to be free on Prime, and I can't remember if it is anymore because I own it on DVD. Um, just kind of like the little indie horror movie that could. It, it's really good. Um, it takes place during Halloween at a haunted, um, like a haunt, like a haunted house um, in upstate New York around Halloween time. It's one of the best found footage movies that I've ever seen. I'm really into it. Um, we also watched these during the Halloween season. There's there's three of these out now. I only own the first one, but they're all worth a watch. So, yeah, if you want to, check it out. Yeah.